three-step rule to find the derivative of a function. What again is the derivative of a function? So given a function defined by y is equal to f of x, okay, so we have this curve, y is equal to f of x. The derivative of the function at x sub 0, y sub 0 is the slope of the line that is tangent to the function at x sub 0, y sub 0. So what is the slope of that tangent line? That is our concern in getting the derivative of a function. So these are the notations that we are using to get the derivative. f prime of x sub 0 dy over dx evaluated when x is equal to x sub 0 df over dx evaluated when x is equal to x sub 0. So this is where we ended in our last video about the derivative of a function. Given a function y is equal to f of x, the derivative of the function is f prime of x is equal to the limit of the change in y over change in x as delta x approaches zero. So when our second line is approaching the tangent line, the slope of our second line, and this is just the slope, change in y cha over change in x, so that's the slope. The slope of our second line approaches the slope of the tangent line. So this is where we ended last time. Now we are going to change our notation, our notation for change in y over change in x. We will not call it that way. Instead, we will write it in this way. The limit of f of x plus delta x minus f of x over delta x as delta x approaches zero, that is the derivative of our function. And so we should do that because that is what we will do. We will evaluate the limit of a function as delta x approaches zero. And by the way, look at this. We have another additional uh, remarks here. Condition if the limit exists. So you know, you know that the limit of functions don't always exist. And that is telling you something. It is telling you that the derivative of a function at a point may not exist. Because we saw from our previous discussions about a continuity and limits that, that there are limits which does not exist. Which means that there could be functions where the derivative of that function at that point does not exist. But for now, let us ignore that, okay? Let us ignore that. We will work only on functions that have a derivative at a point. And by the way, when a function has a derivative at a point, we say that the function is differentiable at that point. Okay, let me spell it. Differentiable. It means the function has a derivative. We have a three-step rule to evaluating the derivative of a function using limit. What you do is, you break down uh, our definition of the derivative into three steps. First, you simplify this. What is f of x plus delta x minus f of x? Next, you simplify this. You divide the results of step one by delta x. And then, get the limit. What is the limit of this expression? Whatever a result your step 2 produces, what is the limit of that as delta x approaches 0? And that's going to be the derivative of your function. You know, evaluating the limit of change in y over change in x, it's like the dragon. Okay, so that is like the metaphor I wish to make. It is the dragon. You don't go straight to challenging the dragon because the dragon will slay you. And you will see why. You will see why when I give you examples about how to get the derivative of functions. 
find the derivative of a function at the indicated point. Let's say our function is f of x is equal to x squared. So what is the derivative of our function when x is equal to 2? So something like this is taking place. We have a function defined by f of x is equal to x squared. That is a parabola that opens upward. And when x is equal to 2, you have a point in your parabola whose coordinates are 2 and 4 you will draw a tangent line to that point. Whatever the slope of that tangent line, that is the derivative of your function when x is equal to 2. So step 1. Let us evaluate f of x plus delta x minus f of x. So f of x plus delta x is x plus delta x raised to 2. Look at that, look at that x plus delta x raised to 2 minus f of x. Next, we simplify. So this is the square of a binomial. And it's equal to x squared plus 2 times x times delta x plus the square of delta x minus x squared. What do we do next? Well, we simplify. x squared minus x squared is 0. Look at that. And so we are left with this. Now, I'm going to factor out delta x because delta x is a common factor. Okay? So factoring out delta x, we are left with 2 times x plus delta x. Okay, so we now go to the second step. Let us evaluate this. Okay? What is f of x plus delta x minus f of x divided by delta x? So this is your change in y over change in x. So by simple substitution, it's equal to this. Delta x times the quantity 2x plus delta x divided by delta x. Delta x divided by delta x is just 1. And so we are left with 2x plus delta x. Okay, so we are done with the second step. This is the result of, uh, of our second step. We will now go to the third step. What is the limit of delta y over delta x as delta x approaches 0? Okay, so as delta x approaches 0, okay, so this becomes limit of 2x as delta x approaches 0 plus the limit of delta x as delta x approaches 0. And this is 0. And we are left here with the limit of 2x as delta x approaches 0 is simply 2x because, because this one is not affected by delta x. It stays as 2x. The derivative now, the general derivative okay, of our function with respect to x is 2 times x. So what then is the slope of the tangent line when x is equal to 2? Okay, so what we will do is we will just evaluate the derivative. The derivative, the general derivative is going to be a function. Look at this. f prime of x is 2 times x. That's a function. And so when x is equal to 2, the derivative of your function is equal to 2 times 2 or 4. So something like this takes place here. So we have a function defined by f of x is equal to x squared. TL is the tangent line to the curve when x is equal to 2. The slope of that tangent line is f prime of 2 and it is equal to 4. So I hope now that you can see the wisdom of doing it through the uh, three-step rule. Because evaluating the limit of your change in y over change in x, that is like a dragon. You don't go straight at challenging the dragon because the dragon will slay you. So you do it step by step. It's divide and conquer.